Um, so I have four major things I'd like to talk about in my 15 minutes, precisely timed. Um, I'll talk a little bit about outdoor recreation and tourism in the state of Michigan. I'll tell you a little bit about the DNR, which is the Department of Natural Resources and Public Trails in Michigan, a little bit about the equine industry, horses and horse riders in the state, and then I'll focus mostly on the most recent, actually the first and, they can and most recent equine trail survey. So this is Michigan. It's interesting geographically. It's actually a pair of peninsulas that are bordered by four of the five Great Lakes. It's about the size of the UK, but with about 10 million people, so a, quite a relatively um, low population density. Um, these are, we divide the state into the lower peninsula. This doesn't seem to work very well. The lower peninsula, the, the hand shape, and then the upper peninsula. Those are the drive times from the top to the bottom of the lower peninsula and from one end to the other of the upper peninsula. More interestingly, particularly as far as the provision of outdoor recreation and tourism, is that most of the population, 90% of the people, live in the southern portion of the lower peninsula, whereas most of the natural resources, the open space, is in the north. Um, in, in the upper peninsula, 90% of that area is forested, and it's mostly managed by state and federal government. Um, Michigan is a very outdoorsy state. There's a very strong outdoor ethic. A lot of people hunt, fish, they camp, they boat, um, and they engage in a lot of different winter activities. Um, so outdoor recreation and tourism are, are important economically, but are also a really important part of the social and cultural fabric. About 12% of the land is managed by the state. Um, there are 100 state parks and recreation areas. We also have the largest state forest in the nation. As I said, Michiganders are extremely out active outdoors, so we have the third highest number of boaters in the country, in the, in the US, the fifth highest numbers of fisher, men and women, and the highest number of snowmobilers, who I will talk about more in a moment in the context of conflict with horse riders. Tourism is also a very big industry. It's our third largest industry, um, about $17 billion spent on tourism in 2010. We also have a relatively new but incredibly um, popular Pure Michigan advertising campaign. Um, and we're going to watch, it's a very short 30 second clip, but it gives you a really good sense of the, the, the kind of landscape and the very strong focus on the outdoors and on natural recreation by the tourism um, authority. They shelter us from the storm. They teach us that beauty grows with age. They give us the air we breathe. And they can explode into colors we never thought possible. The nature of trees reminds us that there are bigger things in life than us. A lesson best learned in a 19 million acre land of giants. Welcome to the woods of Pure Michigan. Your trip begins at michigan.org. So there are about 20 or 30 of these television adverts now. They primarily focus on the northern part of the state, so they're, they're focused on outdoor recreation and tourism. There are a few that are, are urban oriented. Um, there is not one that is horse specific yet. Um, but the reason, the, the great opportunity for the equine industry and equine tourism is that this is an incredibly um, recognized campaign in terms of awards. So in 2009, Forbes, uh, the, the uh, business magazine, listed the top 10 tourism campaigns of all time, and Pure Michigan was one of those top 10 campaigns. So the trail system in Michigan. There are about 12,000 miles of recreational trails in Michigan. About 46% of those are open to horse riders. There is a, an organization or a committee called the Michigan Snowmobile and Trails Committee, and this is an organization, the members of which are appointed by the governor of the state, and they are appointed to advise the governor and the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources, on the use and the management of the trail system. 
There are nine members, and you'll see on the slide that five of those members represent motorized activities, so snowmobilers um, and other kinds of motorized activity that I'll talk about um, in a moment. So the focus in the state traditionally has been on motorized forms of recreation. That said, in 2010, the Right to Ride Act was passed. And as you can see at the bottom, the, the, the premise of this act is that the planning, acquisition, development, operation, and maintenance of trails are in the best interest of the state and are declared to be a public purpose. And some of the reasons behind this recognition of trails is important were, as you see at the top of the slide, um, importance for public enjoyment, health, fitness, constructive leisure time activities, protection of open space, protection of wildlife and plants, and most importantly, especially as far as tying um, trail riding to tourism, is the notion of enhancing local and state economies. And with the, the passing of the Right to Ride Act, an equestrian trail subcommittee was formed as a subcommittee of the larger trails committee that I just mentioned. This has six members. There are five uh, active horse riders from the five regions in the state, and then a state tourism representative, and I'm the, the person on the committee that represents the tourism industry. So this is a very new um, activity in the state to really try and begin to, to grow trail riding as a source of uh, tourism and, of course, as a source of income. So a little bit about horses and riders in Michigan. The most recent equine survey was conducted in 2007. Uh, we have approximately 155,000 horses and ponies in Michigan, 35,000 equine operations, which would, in would include commercial as well as private um, so residences, people that have a horse at home. 60% uh, female participation, very similar to most of the other studies we've heard about this week. Um, a lot of people working in, this, in the industry, as you can see, most of them unpaid, um, and about $485 million spent, directly spent on the upkeep of those horses and ponies. When we look at the riders by numbers as well as age and sex, you'll see that most riders uh, are in the age of 19 to 49, but I think it's interesting to look at the, the differentiation by male, female, you'll see in this in the 8 to 18 category, um, it's about two-thirds female and about one-third male. But by the time we reach the over 50 category, the, the gender ratio has evened out. As far as the uses of horses, so people were asked to list the main use of their horse. Um, and the two categories that I'm most interested in as far as my work with the trail industry is the 37% of horses that are used for recreation or pleasure riding, and then the 11% that are used primarily for trail riding. Um, you'll see yesterday we heard about the racing industry in Michigan. That's a very small proportion um, of the industry, just 4%. As far as those trail riders and pleasure riders, where they ride, you can see that about 50 or just over 50% of riders are riding on private land. Um, about 35% are riding on the roads. And then between 5 and 20% are riding on these public areas, so parks and recreation areas, the state and national forests, and wildlife areas. So once the Equine Trail Subcommittee was formed, one of the first activities that it engaged in was a tr survey of trail users. So this is what I'm going to talk about for the rest of my time. Um, this was very much a non-scientific survey, unfortunately. Um, I did, didn't have a chance to be involved in writing the questions. Some of them I would have uh, worded differently. There were a lot of yes-no questions. Um, there could have been many more opportunities um, to um, add some scales and get a lot more information. But we did get a lot of responses, so 876 responses. Um, and most of the responses came from the lower portion of the state. So again, that's where most of the people live, so that would make sense. People rode an average of 43 times a year. So this was the first important question. Are there enough accessible trails and horse facilities close to your home? And about two-thirds of people said no. Uh, most interesting is that 
in Region 1, you can see that about 80% of people said, no, there aren't enough trails. This is actually the upper peninsula where most of the land is uh, nature-based. It's, it's state and national forest. The issue is, as I mentioned also earlier, that only about 46% of those trails are open to equine use. And unfortunately, very few of the trails in the Upper Peninsula are open to equine use, even though most of the land is um, state and federally owned and managed. The next key question, do you see opportunities for improvement of existing trails and riding facilities? 89% um, of people said yes, another 8% said no, so only 3% 3, 3 of people thought there was an ad adequate um, quantity or quality of trails. We then asked where people would like to see improvements in the trail system. And it's probably natural to expect that people would most like to see improvement in the place that they live. And so you see that for each region, the bar is highest for the particular region um, that, that the respondents are coming from. Interestingly, however, you'll see for region three and four, that whilst most people supported improvements in their own region, a lot of people were also keen to see improvements in region two. So yesterday we talked um, a lot about where the capital of, of riding is in France, um, and I don't think we came to a conclusion. Um, but certainly in Michigan, the, the, this region, the northern part of the Lower Peninsula is the sort of the capital of riding um, for the state. As far as the kinds of improvements people would like to see, um, more, more trails, um, opening of trails that have been closed, which I'll talk about in a moment, why they were closed, more camping facilities, and more and better maintenance of the trails. And these were the six main issues that people were concerned with, which I'll talk about um, briefly, each one. So other activities in the state of Michigan, particularly snowmobiling, hunting, fishing, all require a license to participate. And the purchase of a license includes a fee, and the monies from those fees go back to maintaining the trails for snowmobilers or maintaining um, game areas for hunters or maintaining rivers and streams for fishermen. There is currently no such license for horse riding. Um, so the question was, would you support some kind of a fee or license as is required of other recreational activities if you know, knew that the money would go directly to improving equine activity in the state? Um, and so you can see that most people were in fact supportive of such a fee, though the proportion was um, quite a lot lower in region two for a reason that I don't know. Um, interestingly, however, of about the 75% of people that would be willing to pay a fee, about 20% of those people wanted additional restrictions put on the use of the money. And typically what they wanted was the money from their fee um, to go to improve their local park or trail, um, which from a governmental perspective, at least in the United States, is absolutely impossible. Um, it's, it wouldn't be possible to put such strict re restrictions on such a fee. So that said, one of the main issues that we're working on currently in the Equine Trail Subcommittee is, of course, one, whether to implement such a fee, how much to charge for such a fee, how many dollars, how to implement the fee, so would it be charged per rider, per horse, per trailer? Um, those are three very different pricing mechanisms. And then, of course, how and on what and where to spend um, the monies that would be raised by the fee. A very important issue in Michigan, um, and we heard on Wednesday that this was not an issue for horse riders in the UK, but conflict, recreational conflict, is a large concern in Michigan at least. So this is the, the conflict between different kinds of um, individuals or groups based on, on different individuals or groups' behaviors in recreational settings. Um, and so conflict can really occur in four different ways. Um, it can occur between recreational users of the same activity, so between horse riders. That's not the issue in Michigan. The issue in Michigan is conflict between different activities. 
So of the 70, of the, all the equine trails in Michigan, 72% of them are shared with motorized trail users. So that would be snowmobilers in the winter and ORV riders and ATV riders, which are outdoor recreational vehicles and all-terrain vehicles in the summer. Um, and I realize that some of you might be unfamiliar with snowmobiling, which I wasn't before I moved to Michigan. Um, so these machines um, can move anywhere from 50 up to 80 or 90 miles per hour. They're very loud. Um, most horse riders do not ride on these trails during snowmobiling season, they're more sensible, but there are places where there are crossings, and obviously these are moving extremely fast, and they don't stop. Um, bikers, and here would be an all-terrain vehicle in the top left. Another source of conflict is between the equine trail users and the managers, so members, staff members of the Department of Natural Resources. Um, there is a relatively small but incredibly vocal minority of horse riders who are convinced that the Department of Natural Resources um, would like to see all horse riding banned in the state parks. And there is a lot of very inflammatory rhetoric surrounding trail use. So this article is called Horse Trail Riding, Where Suspicion and Passion Collide. Um, and just, just a few of the words that I'll highlight. There is mistrust accusation, disagreement, and conspiracy theory surrounding um, the, the contentious issue of trail riding in Michigan. So a lot of tension between horse riders and the agency that is managing the place where they are riding. And then finally, conflict between different types of uses. And the key issue, I mentioned that Michigan has the largest state forest in the nation. This is a horse trail. And this could be a situation that you could come across riding. So there's a lot of timber, industrial timber cutting, with obviously a lot of very large machines which aren't terribly compatible um, with a, a leisurely trail ride. Another key issue is signage. And some of the key things that riders would like to know, as probably most of you realize, when they're riding is firstly where they may and may not ride. So clear signage as to where, where equestrians are allowed who they might meet on the trail, particularly whether the trail is open to motorized vehicles or not, and from which direction. So in other words, are people, could a bicyclist be coming towards you, or could a mountain biker be coming up behind you? And we all know how um, problematic that can be for certain horses um, with a, a very fast mountain bike coming up behind you. So this is a great example of a, good trail signage. This is the wheels yield to heels, yield to horses sign. Um, and in Michigan, we have a, an additional uh, where wheels yield to he heels, yield to horses, and all users yield to dog sleds in the winter when uh, people might be dog sledding along the trails. And the other examples of, of good examples of trail signage. Il vous reste une minute. Um, as far as length, there's a lot of issue with many, we have a lot of short trails that are maybe a mile or two, um, which doesn't give you much of a ride. There's not much of an incentive to trailer a horse to a, tr a trail that's going to take you, you know, less than an hour to ride around. So tr riders would like longer trails. They would also like looped trails. As you can see in this map, this is a great example of loop trails where there are multiple opportunities to, to ride in the area and go in different directions and take multiple loops make, make the ride more interesting and more worthwhile. Access to water and water crossings is another critical issue. Many of the natural water sites and crossings have been closed in Michigan because of the perception or the actuality that horses are damaging water quality as well as causing a lot of erosion along the banks of the streams. Um, this is a product called GeoCell that can be laid down across um, a, a trail crossing to stabilize the, the soil. Um, here are other options, so defining the trailway so as to minimize widening of the trail by the horse riders. And here's another example of, of steps down to a water crossing. Um, this is what happens when a water crossing or a water source is closed. The DNR does provide alternatives, but what the sign says here is that this pump to access water for you, for you and your horse requires a minimum of a 5,000 watt generator. 
So obviously, unless you're staying in this, this is where you're camping, you're unlikely to be carrying a 5,000 watt generator with you, in which case access to water becomes a very critical um, issue and limits, prevents, uh, basically, riding. Uh, my last issue, access to parking. So Nicole talked about this when she Skyped in from Canada on um, Wednesday. Uh, trailers in America are, of course, supersized, as are many things in America. Um, a, a trailer like this could be 40 feet, so 13 meters, without the truck. And obviously, you need a massive pickup truck to pull the massive horse trailer. So not only do these take up a lot of space in the parking area, but they have incredibly large turning radii. Um, that it's really hard for the DNR to, to facilitate these massive vehicles um, as they design new parking areas. So lastly, opportunities, 10 seconds. Um, economic impact, I think we've talked about that um, a lot already. Uh, the DNR desi desire to be the trail state, so many states in America would like to be the trail state. Michigan is extremely keen to be the trail state. Um, and partnerships with Travel Michigan. Travel Michigan has an incredibly popular website. It doesn't yet have any coverage of equine activities, but there is a great opportunity to add equine to this listing of activities that see, you see on the list. Um, and so that's what we will be focusing on in the equine trail subcommittee in the next few years.